Thank you for that, Dr. June B. Paul. Hallelujah. Giving all honor and glory to the Most High God. You know, in Matthew's, the 28th chapter, and the 19 and 20 verse, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, <clears throat> even unto the end of the earth, even unto the end of the world. Now, if you have a red letter edition Bible, that writing would be in red. And that's because our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ is speaking this. So he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So if he's speaking this, that means he is commanding us to teach this. So therefore, I want to bring specifics to the first thing he says is go into all the world and teach all nations and he says, baptizing them in these three names. And the first name is the Father. And the second name is the Son. And the third name is the Holy Ghost. You notice he's given specifics. He didn't say that. He said, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, teach them to observe everything that I have said. Now we know this is Jesus the Christ. But he's also known as the Word. The Word that became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, that of the only begotten of the Father. So therefore, everything he said means everything that's in the Word. Everything that's in the Bible. Because, you know, God says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall never pass away. <clears throat> And then the Bible clearly says in the St. John, the first chapter, that Jesus is the Word. It says the Word was with God, the Word was God. Amen? In the beginning. Hallelujah. Then it said the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, that of the only begotten of the Father. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. Therefore, the Word is Jesus, and Jesus is the Word. So therefore, everything that he said, he says, he says, teaching them to observe it. So this is one of the things he said in, in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He said, go into all the world. And he says, I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why did he bring specifics to it? Because they all don't function the same way. How does the Father function? I'm going to ask you another question. How does the sun function? My God. I'm going to ask you one more question. How does the Holy Ghost, how does he function? God is Elohim. Glory to God. The word El means all power. Elohim means uh, creative power that sustains. So we're talking about uh, you know, we're talking about each one of them function differently. Glory to God. One function as Elohim, another one function as uh, Adonai, 
That's the Holy Spirit, by the way. The other uh, God, part of the Godhead, Jesus, he functioned as Yahweh. Yahweh and Jehovah. Yes, he's the Savior. He's the Messiah. He's the Anointed One. So the question is, how do the Father function? I'm about to give you an example. The Father functions, He functions as He did with Adam in the garden. He would meet with Adam in the cool of the day. Every day He would meet with Adam. Adam fell and Adam lost his innocence and instead of Adam meeting with the father he was hiding from the father but nonetheless the father still showed up our heavenly father still said Adam where art thou now you think God asked him that because he didn't know where Adam was Yes, he knew where Adam was and he knew everything about Adam. He created, he made Adam. But he wanted Adam to answer that. Adam said, I'm hiding. Well, why are you hiding? Did you eat of that fruit that I commanded you not to eat of, partake of? Did you disobey me? Is that why you're hiding? He said, I'm hiding because I'm naked. He said, well, who told you you were naked? That means he, now God is allowing Adam to acknowledge that someone else is influencing him. Someone else is speaking to him. Someone else is having uh, some type of influence over him. But how does the Father operate? I just described it, but let me make... Let me be a little more specific. Remember, we got to bring specificity to the Godhead, which is the Father, is the first one that's on, you know, I'm spotlighting the Father. The Father operates with his presence. You see, Adam would meet God in the cool of the day every day. Except this day, he's hiding. He's hiding from the presence of God when he should be hiding in the presence as we do today. We go into prayer on a daily basis. We welcome God's presence. Oh, we would do anything for his presence to be, uh, to be endowed upon us. And so therefore we wait uh, minutes and goes into hours to acknowledge and to experience the presence of God. We're, Adam was hiding from the presence, we are hiding in the presence because we love the presence of God. So therefore God operates in the presence. Well then how does the sun operate? How does the sun if I had to put it in a word, just like I did for the Father. We know the Father has more uh, operation than that, but I'm putting it in a word. Just so you could see. Just so you could see that if you spend time in prayer, guess what's going to come upon you? The presence. <laughs> the presence of God. My God. A lot of us don't realize that. We put them all in a box and say, that's the Godhead. No, 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 no. The Father, we acknowledge His presence through prayer. This is why prayer is so important. Because if we are absent in prayer, we're going to be absent in the presence of God. Now, going back to the Second one that Matthew spoke about, he said, be baptized in the name of the Father. Then he says, in the name of the Son. The Son represents Jesus. My God, the Word, <laughs> the Savior, the Messiah. What's another word for him? The Anointed One, the Christ, 
The word Christ means the anointed one. My God. So if I had to put Jesus in a word, I would speak about the anointing. The anointing. Remember the Bible said the anointing destroys every yoke of bondage. That's right. We need God's anointing. If we don't have his anointing, my God, the devil would overtake us. The anointing, glory to God, has the power to destroy the yokes of bondage. Yes, the anointing has the power to destroy the yokes. How do we get anointed? We get anointed through the anointed one. And his name is what? Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, and Jesus even when the sun go down. Now, I covered the Father, the presence. I covered the Son, the anointed, the anointing or the anointed one. The anointed one just means he don't have the anointing. He is the anointing. Glory to God. He is the anointing. You cannot have Jesus without having the anointing. Now, the third, the third member of the Godhead. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. If I could put a word on him, just uh, 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 present uh, who he is in a word. You know what word I, that I would use? The power of God. See, the Holy Ghost don't have power. He doesn't have the power. He is the power of God. But getting back to Genesis, as I was speaking, God said, let us make man in our own image. He was talking to the other members of the Godhead. They all was in agreement like they always is. And God spoke it. Jesus, as we call Jesus, but the word formed it from the, the mud and the clay on the ground. He made sort of like Play-Doh. He made something that looked like a man. As a matter of fact, it looked exactly like a man. As a matter of fact, it looked just like Adam because that's what he was making. He was making the physical part of Adam. And then God breathed it into his nostrils. That's when the Holy Spirit kicked in. And the Bible said man became a living soul. And not only did he become a living soul, but he also received the image and likeness of God because God said it, let us make him in our own image and in our own likeness. And then he received the five blessings, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue the earth, have dominion all in one breath that if you put them all into one box and say the Godhead that's it I serve God that's it you serve the Father you serve the Son and you serve the Holy Spirit because they all have different functions they all work uh, in their own administration remember the Father is the presence. The Son is the anointed, the anointing, and the Holy Ghost is the power. <laughs>